Hey everybody, Brett here with Double Shots, and today I have new important information and news for T-Mobile home and business internet uh, customers that they need to hear about, see if they've been affected by any of the changes, or going from there. Now, I'm doing this on my own independent research information I have been given. I am not getting paid a commission or anything for go ahead and producing this as well too. I'm doing this on my own independent research. So T-Mobile Home Internet, when it came out, it was supposed to be this explosive fierce and break barriers uh, from the uncarrier and bring a newer way to reach out and use the internet. So instead of using a coaxial fiber or uh, a, a fiber line, they started bringing out these, rolling out these gray Nokia boxes that hooked up over 5G towers. Great areas. Some areas have good coverage, some do not. However, people were having problems with the gray Nokia mo modems overheating. So eventually, they changed out to these modems right here, the, uh, this other Nokia device that is right here. And it's... Uh, I mean, it works, uh, no overheating issues. And eventually some home customers might even get this one right here, this model right here. And you know what, I'll tell you this right now, if you can get this model right here, this is the go-to one, simply because you have the four external antennas that you can hook up to it as well too. So you have the chance to break your barrier coverage and make it a little bit faster. Now, I could dive into that, but yes, this has the four external outputs. This is a good device. So this is a keeper right here. However, on the business side, they use the Nokia, and then they eventually changed out to this S1 device right here that I have that can be used for business. Now, so here's how it kind of worked with it. They wanted you to be able to stream all you wanted, everything, truly unlimited, yada, 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 stream Netflix, stream Apple TV, stream this, stream this. Then after that, we've heard some conflicting reports. Well, on the residential side of things, if you are a T-Mobile customer, they have put a silent cap of 1.2 terabytes onto your level to be able to use. Now, this could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. It depends how much you stream, what you stream, what you have hooked up wirelessly. The average household has 10 or more plus items that additionally hook up to Wi-Fi. So it's kind of one of those things, and it depends what, you're, what, what services you're streaming and truly. And if you're using camera systems, if you're using alarm systems, etc. Those things come into accountability going from there. So if you are video games as well too. So if you are truly on like Xbox, PlayStation, and streaming services constantly 24 seven or throughout the day, the average person watches TV for six to seven hours, possibly a day. Uh, that's just on average between their computers, the televisions, that's just the average of everything. Uh, going from there. That being said, 1.2 terabytes, I would still be cautionate because it's reachable. Now, if you are a high-level gamer that, you know, absolutely sits on your games 7, 8, 9, 10 hours a day, uh, even, you know, for, for, for conferences, Zoom calls, uh, YouTubing, stuff of that nature, it's going to eat into that 1.2 terabytes. So... It's really not a lot of boundary, but it is boundary. So it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Now, after that 1.2 terabytes, they have the right to throttle you back to slower speeds. Have I been throttled before in the past? I could say this past week was probably the first time ever I experienced some kind of buffering or throttling within this, which is why I decided to go ahead and do my research. Now, they've kind of changed things with their plans as well too. So you can get T-Mobile internet on the residential side, 60 bucks a month, and that's just only internet. Now, you get a discount down to $50 a month if you sign up with the internet and you have one of the uh, Go 5G Magenta or Essentials plans. Next, you can go down to $40 a month with a Go 5G Next Plus or Magenta Max plan. So those are the plans on the residential side of things. That being said, business customers... Business customers, this is something new as well, too. Business customers have a lot less than this. And I'm going to say this. The reason why I'm going to say 
the limits are probably where they're at is because probably abusing the terms and conditions and uh, when you're more or less business oriented, it's not about watching or streaming video. It's not about watching streaming services, etc. It's about doing work productivity collaboration and going from there. Still, the pricing points of everything are a little concerning for me just because I don't think it's as competitive is where it needs to be. It might need to be a little bit reduced going from there. So you, if you are a business customer, business customers, you either get 100 gigabytes of data per month or 300 gigabytes of data per month. Now, if you go with the 100 gigabyte plan, it is $50 a month. If you go with the 300 gigabyte plan, it is $70 a month. However, you can still get discounts on certain plans if they are bundled with a T-Mobile plan uh, on the business side. So you're going to want to reach out to your business channel partner, whoever is in charge of that account, and ask for fine detail of that. This is a little concerning on the 100 or the 300, simply because... That can easily be beaten. That can be easily defeated the purpose. Now, again, they throttle you back after those. Is it true throttling or is it not true throttling? I have nowhere to be seen on that. That being said, it concerns me for businesses that have to use within the production of this. Simply because there are businesses that can easily go over 100 gigabytes of data. That's not a lot. Neither is 300. So it's something you really want to watch. If anything, this is almost like Verizon. Verizon has something similar for their business clients. And though it is still cheaper, much cheaper than Verizon's version are going from there. So if you're looking between Verizon and that, as long as the coverage areas are more solid, it's good to go. This would be your better choice. I still like it simply because you don't have to hook it up. But that does concern me with the gigabytes of data. I am a true household. I have not had a cable box in my house in years. So I depend and thrive off of being able to use my streaming services. I have children, so that for, and you know, those are one of those things that come into a lot. We use it in our daily lives. I use a computer almost every day integrated or in meetings for my job. So it is important for me to be able to maximize how much time I have. And it, it, it really does depend. Me, myself, and I, I still have T-Mobile home internet. However, I have always had a secondary backup simply for the fact of, for the price, you can't beat it. So even if I'm paying, and I believe with mine, I'm paying, I believe like 50 bucks a month. Even with my secondary internet combined, I'm spending only like a hundred bucks a month. That being said, that is my interpretation on the business side is the reason they started capping it is people were trying to stream services or stream TV. And usually on the business side, it's a little bit on the interpretation, a lot different than there's more regulation business than personal. That being said, I don't, in a way I can sense the cap, but I, it doesn't make sense, especially with AT&T in my area is actually bumping out fiber now. So that's really something. And right now they have so many promos that can make fiber cheaper and more lucrative and getting a gig of service, etc. Same thing with Spectrum or Comcast or anything of that nature. Com or, or, so Spectrum in my area, I can get a gig of uh in, I can get a uh, one gig down internet speeds for fifty bucks a month on a promo with uh, Spectrum Str Spectrum TV. So that's a real good deal. And then the speed is not capped or anything of that nature. So this kind of concerns me how much backlash they're going to get out of this. How many home internet customers and business home internet customers they might possibly lose out of this. So that's really concerning. Another thing, you might have got to your TV. Usually you like to watch your Hulu, your Fubo TV, your Direct TV stream, Sling TV, Apple TV. However, if you're not able to access it, 
it's not because something's wrong mechanically. It's that T-Mobile is now blocked. Their internet is now blocked from services like Hulu, T Hulu TV, Fubo TV, Direct TV Stream, Sling TV, Apple TV. It does work with Spectrum TV, but how long will it work with Spectrum TV? I don't know. For all I know, a Spectrum person could be watching this video and say, hey, we don't want that to happen, so guess what happens here? We're going to start implementing our server to not go ahead and take that. And I would, and here's my thing. It all comes down to a piece of the pie and who gets that. Companies like DirecTV Stream, well, they want you to sign up with AT&T for their internet. Of course, because they're going to enrich a package together. They want you to use their flawless product, they call it, to use their services. Uh, however, like uh, <clears throat> Spectrum, currently you can still do that. You just will not be able to access your uh, home channels, some certain channels with the Spectrum app. So you're good to go there unless, again, Spectrum TV is watching everything. That being said, let me go ahead and tell you this as well, too. This is the kind of contradictory thing that I don't like. You get Apple TV on them, on their home, their residential side plans. They give you Apple TV. However, if you have their home internet, you cannot stream Apple TV with their internet now. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having it. So there's a lot of concern. There's a lot of gray area. I can confirm that these other apps, it does not work with them right now. Or Maybe it's because of the area. And one of the things they say is because it doesn't give your true location. So using a cellular network, it pings off the closest remote area. So it, let's say you run a speed test. Sometimes your speed test will ping out of your general location. Sometimes it can go as, to, as far as 800 uh, miles away from your location. I know on AT&T, if I do a speed test... I go out of Alpharetta, Georgia, or Dallas, Texas, even though I'm in my Missouri market. T-Mobile, it hits either here, Chicago, or Kansas City, Missouri on speed test. So I can kind of understand where the true geographical location would be, and they need to have that. Now, YouTube TV, it does on some users. It does, does it on some users. Guys, I have a feeling this might hurt the way that T-Mobile, especially them trying to be the uncarrier, this might tarnish the uncarrier on the breaking barrier of home internet. This might be something that might hurt them in that home internet, make them lose subscribers on that area. T-Mobile is a company fabulous on the speeds. I will say that 100%. Have my speeds physically been affected by it? Absolutely not. I think the only time my speeds were actually bad were over the last two days uh, simply because there were network problems and AT&T had network problems today as well too. However, I still like their internet. I'm going to continue to keep it just because of the discounts I get with them. The discounts alone plus their cellular service, it's still hard to beat and with that robust discount I get for having the cellular, it's a win-win situation for me. I just have to keep it down. So that being said, let me know what you think about this. If you have T-Mobile Internet, let me know if you've experienced slower speeds. I think the slowest speed I have actually ever had with T-Mobile Internet was this past Tuesday in which I experienced one megabit per second. And we weren't even in the gigabytes per second. We were one megabyte per second. And I don't think I had to upload. But to be fair, there was network issues off of everything, whether they want to announce they had network issues. I know it came out today with AT&T, and some other carriers possibly had it. Some people said they had service, some people didn't. So that could generally portion it. I think after that, the slowest speed that I ever, ever had was 300 megabytes per second. But I have gotten speeds over a gig with T-Mobile before. So that is one of the reasons why I do not want to give up that. Because it's truly hard to find companies to do that. 
But again, let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you've been adversely affected with that and kind of go from there. I will be doing some more streaming service reviews actually towards the end, end part of the week, maybe tomorrow. I might be doing a Spectrum TV review. So uh, you'll want to stick around for that. Hope you guys like this video. I want to thank Double Shots, Dylan, for going ahead and allowing me to do this video. Smash that like button as we are inching to a thousand subscribers. We want to make that goal here this year. That is one top priority, and we're going to try to pump out as much content as we can daily, uh, whether it's technology, sports, etc. I will see you guys in the next video.